Hey everyone, how's it going? It's me, Jeff the IT Guy. Today, i got a new video for you. We're going to be taking a look at the new Ryzen 7 5800X versus the last gen Ryzen 9 3900 XT. You're probably like, Jeff, dude, why are you comparing a Ryzen 9 to a Ryzen 7? Well, the reason I'm doing that is because this one here at the time of filming is 469. This one here is 449, so they're in the same price bracket, and that's why we're comparing them. And you'll see from our results um, why they're in the same price bracket. So we're going to talk about games, and we're going to talk about productivity in this video. So if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. You don't want to miss all the videos that are coming up here on the channel. So let's talk about productivity first. Let's talk about Premiere Pro. And so we're comparing a 12 core 24 thread versus an 8 core 16 thread uh, part. So like I said earlier, it's because they're in the same price bracket. So when we look at Premiere Pro, you're going to see, from my test at least, around the same performance. And so in Premiere Pro with a 45 minute video with some editing um, for, you know, color correction, and audio as well. The Ryzen 9 did it in seven minutes and 40 seconds, a 1080p, 45 minute video. The Ryzen 7 5800X did it in seven minutes and 43 seconds. That is, that is insanity right there. That is insanity that an eight core 16 thread part did just as well as a 12 core 24 thread part. So that just goes to show just how well uh, AMD has done. And so <clears throat> you're probably wondering about the test system as well. And so in the test system, we're using 32 gigs of G-Skill Trident Z Neo RAM. It is 3200 megahertz with a cast latency of 16. It is on an MSI X570 Meg Ace motherboard. And we're using an ASUS Strix 5700 XT O. See, um, and everything was done. I mean, you don't need to know about the other stuff, but and everything was done at stock, so there was no overclocking. Everything it was just stock in the BIOS um, with PBO and stuff turned off, and then it was all being cooled with a Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4 cooler. So everything was set up the same, um, made sure fan curves, everything like that was all of the same. And so, as you can see, just from doing that productivity. You know, they're pretty much right on track as far as being able to render and stuff like that. So that's really cool to see the improvements. Let's talk about gaming. Everyone wants to know about gaming, of course. Not everyone does productivity. <clears throat> so I tested quite a few games. Um, first game we're going to talk about is Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And so running this with all stock settings, um, you know, we had a max FPS at four, and I did these at 1440p and... 1080 so there's two results um, 1440 puts a little bit better load in the GPU 1080 puts a better load on the CPU so we'll get to see how it does so at 1440p uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey everything at ultra the max FPS for the 5800X was 113 the max for the 3900 XT was 87 the average FPS for the 5800X was 64 and the average was 60. And that's for 1440p. And so as you can see, there's um, a little bit of an increase there, you know, a couple percent increase. So we go on, we look at the 1080p results. With the, F, with the max FPS for the 5800, it was 122-ish. Um, for the 50, for the 3900 XT, it was 114. The average FPS, which is what we really want, was 75 for the 5800X and the 3900 XT was 71. So still within about four or five FPS there. Moving on, we did Far Cry 5, same resolutions, ultra settings. The um, max FPS for the 5800 was 70, or I'm sorry, was the 87, and the max for the 3900 XT was 86. The average FPS for both of these was 70 at 1440p. So the average FPS was the same. 
At 1080p, the max FPS was 132 for the 5800X and was 119 for the 3900XT. The average FPS was 109 for the 5800X and 102 for the 3900XT. And so we can see there there's a still a couple percent difference within about 10 FPS of each other. For the Division 2, we just have average FPS. So the average FPS for the 5800X was 68. The average for the 3900, uh, was, I'm sorry, it was 66 for the 5800X. And for the 3900XT, it was 67. So the 3900XT had a one, one FPS lead at 1440p, and it completely flip-flops at 1080p. Um, you get 91 for the 5800X and 90 for the... Uh, 3900 XT. Borderlands 3, uh, ultra settings again. Um, for the 5800X, you had 76.71 as the average FPS, and the 3900 XT was 74.75. At 1080p, the average FPS for Borderlands 3 was 110, and for, for the 5800X, for the 3900 XT, it was 100 and 8.78, I had to pull up my laptop, these numbers are small. <clears throat> okay, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, an oldie but a goodie at 1440p. The max FPS for the 5800X was 209, 259, and then for the 3900XT for the max, it was 186. The average FPS for the 5800X was 178, and the average was 140 for the 3900 XT. That was insane. I couldn't believe it. I ran the test several, several times, and I came up with the same numbers. I can't believe that there was that much of a difference. <clears throat> for 1080p, the story continues. For the max FPS for the 5800X, it was 271. For the max for the 3900 XT, it was 189. For the average, it was 184. For the 5800X and 144 for the 3900XT. So we're talking 40 FPS gains. That's insanity. I have no idea why it did that. I wish I did. Um, but like I said, I ran that test probably four or five times at least on each, each setting. <clears throat> so moving on to Far Cry New Dawn at 1440p. The max was 133 for the 5800 at X and 131 for the 3900 XT. The average was 97 for the 5800X and 90 for the 3900 XT. So we can still see those gains. Um, <clears throat> 1080p was 181 for the 5800 XT at max, 150 for the 5800 X, uh, 3900 XT at max, for the average, you have 100 for the 5800X and 90, or 109 actually, for the 5800X and 96 for the 3900XT. Okay, and our last game is Shadow of War, Middle Earth Shadow of War. This one, I'm going to preface this with, this was insanity. I have no idea. Uh, these results were crazy as well. Um, <clears throat> didn't go off the way I would figured it, it would have, but... I want to test a wide variety of games, some old, some new, and so our results are a little bit wonky on this one. Uh, I don't know why. So for the 5800X, the max FPS was 127, but for the 3900 XT, it was 196. No idea why that was. I ran this test multiple, multiple, multiple times. Um, the average FPS for the 5800X was 83. And for the 3900 XT, it was 87. So moving on to Shadow of War at 1080p, <clears throat> we see that the FPF, FPS max for the 5800X was 285. And for the 3900 XT, it was 306. And then it flip falls. The average FPS for the 5800X was 127 while the average for the 3900 XT was 121. So just pure insanity all the way around on that one. I will say this through all the games and you'll see through the slides that the, um, the 5800 X always had a higher low FPS as well. 
And so that just goes to speak to the single thread. So <clears throat> let's move on to temperatures and stuff like that. So for the 3900 XT, um, the max temperature I ever saw was five was 57 degrees, and that was with the Dark Rock Pro 4, and the all core was 4.3 gigahertz. Um, it would get 4.3 gigahertz all core, <clears throat> 57 degrees for the max temp. With the 5800X, saw anywhere between a 4.5 to 4.7 all core, uh, but it's typically around 4.5 gigahertz all core. Single core on the 5800X, it would boost up to like almost five gigahertz, like 4.95. Um, it would run two to four cores at 4.8, two cores at like 4.9. So it was, you know, this, I believe there's some uh, overclocking headroom in this one. There's other reviewers out there who have gotten their 5800X to like 4.8, 4.9 gigahertz. I haven't overclocked this one. I might, I don't know yet. And the max temp for the 3800, or for the 5800X was 60 degrees. So still nice and cool, lots of uh, thermal headroom that can be taken advantage of. As my computer monitor back here goes off, it got tired of listening to me, I guess. So what's, what's all this mean? You know, looking at all these games, this productivity. What it means is, is that AMD has done a great job in taking an eight core and making it on par in productivity with its 12 core part. So that's, I mean, it's a third less cores, third less threads, um, putting it on par and then beating it. Uh, the 3900 XT, you know, had a really high boost. It was a great processor for third gen and then beating it um, by <clears throat> several percent. Um, and even at 1080p, just stomping it by 30, 40 FPS, which is insane to think that you could have that sort of gain just by upgrading your CPU. Now, if you have a 3900 XT, do you need to go out and upgrade? No, you don't. You don't need to go out and upgrade. It's not gonna be that good of, a, of an upgrade as far as if you're doing productivity, um, if you're doing you know, gaming. Some games you're not gonna see that high of FPS. If you're, if you're at 1440p, there's no reason to go out and upgrade. If you're at 1080p, um, if you're at 1080p, you're probably already rocking something like a 3600 maybe or 2600, 2700, maybe Intel, you know, you're probably not using a 5950 or a 3950X or a 3900XT, something like that. So if you're at 1440p and you've got one of these, don't do it. If you're on second gen Ryzen or maybe you're on like uh, eighth or ninth gen um, Intel, yeah, I mean, you're gonna see some pretty good performance gains. If you're on 10th gen Intel, no, don't do it. Um, the 5600X beats the 10900 in games, so there's the 5800X. So, you know, if you're on an older system, a couple years old, you're not going to go wrong with upgrading to the to you know to this. Um, if you can wait a year, if you know you're on ninth gen Intel or third gen uh, AMD, you probably want to wait a year, see what Intel has coming out, and see what the next platform is going to be for AMD. The reason for that is because this is the last processor that's going to be supported on current AMD uh, platforms. And so there will be a new AMD platform when the new AMD processor comes out, which will probably be the end of next year. And so there's not going to be that backwards compatibility. So this is the last chip that will fit into your X570 board or your B550 or your X470, uh, B470. So if you can wait, hold out. If not, go for it, you know, you're not going to be disappointed. Um, the 5600X at 299 is just raffle stomping everything. Uh, the 5800X was a, a fantastic processor um, to look at. I was surprised to see the gains. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. It really helps me out. We've got a lot of cooler reviews, case reviews coming here on the channel. Um, a lot of stuff that we're going to look at, especially when we're talking about like the consoles and stuff like that. We're going to look at those. Uh, leave a like, leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this. Tell me what uh, what processor you're using. Um, you know, if you're looking to upgrade to Ryzen 5000, uh, what do you think about the performance? Can you believe that AMD's come this far in such a short amount of time? Um, and, you know, anything else, I like talking to you all. So stay tuned, go ahead and subscribe, and keep it real.